All right, good morning, everybody. Susan Dozier here on behalf of the Heart of North Carolina Tourism. I am so excited to introduce our lead for today is gonna to be Heidi Bellotto, a Charlotte media personality, um, a major Instagram influencer. Um, you may look at her Instagram feed and say, wait a minute, she doesn't have 10,000 followers. How is she an influencer? Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to tell you, she's one of the most important influencers I've ever worked with because the people who follow her actually do what she says. And they're real genuine followers. And so in, in my world, that's called a micro influencer. And they're very important right now. So Heidi is going to do our session on um, Instagram. Heidi, are you open to questions while you're talking? How do you want us to do this? I am. Since we have a smaller group, I'm fine for people just to pipe right in. Just, un, you know, if you press the space bar, you can unmute yourself and um, and just ask a question or pop in. Or if, you're, if there's no noise where you are and you just want to leave yourself unmuted, that's fine. Um, if we hear something, you know, Susan, maybe we'll just say, oh, wait, somebody's got, there's something going on. And, um, but you're, you're fine to do it either way. And if you want to, um, uh, type comments in the chat, you're welcome to do that too. And well, I won't necessarily be able to keep up with those while I'm talking, but Susan will. And so she, if you have a question and you don't want to speak up, which you're welcome to do, just type it in there and then Susan, or just say, you know, it's Amber and I have a question and Susan will, will just say that and we'll, we'll get everybody in. And then for people that are watching the rebroadcast of this, um, if you have a question about anything, please don't feel like you're never going to get an answer. Feel free to contact me or to contact Susan, either one of us. Uh, I'll just tell you kind of at the top, Susan, we did this at the end of the, the Facebook session yesterday, but you can reach me. The easiest place is HeidiBellotto at gmail.com. Uh, you can also reach me through my website at HeidiBellottoFood.com, sort of a shameless plug I'll throw in there. And then Susan, you want to tell where people can reach you the easiest? Sure, sure, sure. Since this is Instagram, I'm going to challenge them to message me there. Um, S Dozier, S-D-O-S-I-E-R. What's your Instagram handle, Heidi? I'm at Heidi Bellotto, H-E-I-D-I -I, and then B-I-L-L-O-T-T-O. -T -T -O. Fabulous. So, um, I will go back and follow everybody. Cynthia, what's the, is it, is it just Milligan Farms? What's your, what's your Instagram? Farm, I forgot. Yes, know. it's Milligan Farms. Milligan uh, Farms. Okay, well, I'll go yes. back and follow you. And then Lindbrook, I think I'm already following you. So, um, yeah, it's just Lindbrook Hall. Yeah, Lindbrook Hall. Okay, good, good, good. So here, so Cynthia and Allison, because you guys do, uh, social media for a venue that is not you. Um, this will be a really good, uh, so we, there'll be a lot for you to take in. Um, and, and do we, have we found out who clerk is yet? Are you connected? No, we don't know. Okay. Well, good. Well, um, if you have any questions, just let us know or type it in the chat. Um, and if you are, if you, there's two different kinds of Instagram feeds. There's actually three. But one is just a person. So I'm just Heidi Pilato, person who lives in Charlotte. And I use my Instagram to talk about things I like. And that's what most just people do no, Instagram feed for. They may repost a, a shop that they bought a dress in. They may repost a place where they shop for food. They may post a picture of a recipe. But they're not trying to drum up business. They're just connecting with friends. Um, they're not trying to, to get any money for what they post or do anything like that. If you have a business account, uh, which is what most, uh, you can sign, you can have a business, have a, you can as a business have a personal account, but what you really need is a business account. Be and you can easily do that. If you, if you have a business, say you're a potter in Seagrove or say you're a shop in, in Archdale, and you have a person, you have your, your Instagram as a personal account, you can easily change it over to a business account. And the reason you wanna do that is because as a business account, you can pick up all the analytics. So you can see who is following you, what time of day they follow you, where your market is. And those are all real important um, pieces of information to have as you put together what you post. And, and this whole session, everything Susan and I have talked about, through Facebook yesterday and today on Instagram and tomorrow on Google, it, it's very important as a business uh, or venue that you post with intention. 
So you're not just going to throw a post up that, that has nothing to do with what you do. But we'll come back to that. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's easy to do. So I'm going to show you on my phone uh, because I think that's the easiest way rather than doing a screenshot. So um, let me see. I, I practiced and I had it just perfect. <laughs> so there is my Instagram feed. Now, the, the thing you need, so this will be interesting to see Amber, Cynthia, and Allison. Does your Instagram feed look like mine right now with all these new buttons across the top, across the bottom? Instagram has just changed. And Susan, does yours? Yes. I'll be interested. Yes, so mine I, does. I think they've just flipped everybody over. It was very slow at the beginning. Um, so used to be in the center here was an X and that's what you pushed to, to post something. Now the X is up here at the top and that's what you're gonna push when you wanna do a post. So the reason, well, here's what's happened to Instagram. They are competing with TikTok. So TikTok are the people that do all those funny little dance videos that sort of kept everybody sane at the beginning of all the COVID stuff. So now right in the center is a, is a, a little uh, tab to post a reel. A reel is a short 15 second or 30 second video. And that is what Instagram wants there to be everywhere right now because they're competing with TikTok. So it just depends on how that fits into what you do. I would say for Cynthia and Allison, you know, you're not gonna post a video of you dancing around your kitchen for either one of your venues. It just makes zero sense. And I can tell everyone here and everyone who listens to this in the future, you are never gonna see me dancing around my kitchen. It is not my forte <laughs> and, and I'm just not gonna, not gonna do it. But, um, but there are other reels that you can post. So, um, but reels are the thing right now. And if you post one, Instagram will push it out more and more and more because that's what they want to be on their feed. But look, again, kind of getting ahead of myself. So this little button up here, this little X is how you post something. So if you touch it, it, uh, whoops, there we go. You can do, you can post a, po a regular post. You can post to your stories. You can post an IGTV video, which I do a lot of. You can post a reel or you can post a guide. Now the guide is new with this whole new update and, and I'll tell you about each of these, but let's just start with the post. So we're gonna go to a post. You're gonna pull up a picture um, that's, that pops up from your, um, your uh, picture library, you know, where your video library where all your pictures are on your phone. And then you're gonna post about it. Now this is a, I just posted this on Facebook. So it's on the top of my feed today but uh, top of my pictures today, it's a, a personalized cutting board that a man in Mooresville makes. And he, he, does, he does them for chefs all over the country. Um, so if I wanna post that, if that's the post I wanna do, then I just come up here and hit next. Whoops, sorry, next. And then see now mine is all a black background and I, I have to see that just happened this morning. So I don't know if that's something I can adjust or not. It probably is. But anyway, then you just type in your caption and um, and if it's some sort of sponsored post, you type in a business partner. You definitely want to type in your location and then you um, and then you post it. So you share it. So let's go back. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to walk through the buttons. Um, so Probably all of you have done that. You've all posted something. Um, so we're gonna talk, come back to hashtags in just a second. But um, these, if you have a business account, these three little bars here tell you, if you touch those, you can go to anything. So you can see about your archives. You can see about your insights, which tells you when people follow you, that it tells you what time, I'll just show you. It tells you how many people followed you, who followed you, where they are, what your posts were. You can click on your posts like, um, let's see this one, or go to your posts, sorry. And it'll tell you what your reach was, how many people, whoops. There you go. How many people like you. you this post of carrots, I posted a year and a half ago. It's the most popular picture I've ever posted. Um, second to, uh, 
Oh, there's my porcupine picture. I have a picture of me feeding a porcupine at the zoo that for a long time was the was the most popular one I posted. I think food has crept up over the porcupine now. But I will tell you that for a long time the porcupine what? What Susan? North Carolina Zoo. Yes, the North Carolina Zoo. It was a porky her name is Sally. She's the porcupine at the North Carolina Zoo. Let's see, wait a minute. Um, I'll find her. Hold on one sec. We won't spend a lot of time looking for Sally. But anyway, uh, I got to feed her a local sweet potato. And, um, and I just wanted to sit down and, and pull her up into my lap until the trainer said, you know, you can do whatever you want, but those are real spines. So I didn't <laughs> do that. <laughs> but um, real quills. So um, anyway, that, that feature tells you what kind of posts are the most popular on your feed. And you need to watch that because if, if food is the most popular and chefs are the most popular thing on my feed and I go post a picture of my car, probably not gonna draw as much attention to my feed. So, so that's what that insights button can tell you. Uh, and that all is up here in those three little uh, lines now. Then across the bottom, the, the little house is your home feed. So that is where you look at other people's stuff. And, um, and you, can, you can just scroll through and see what other people are posting. And you can like those posts. If there's something that you really like, so you can, this is one that was posted by um, Tidewater Grain Company, which is a North Carolina rice from Oriental, North Carolina. I, so I can like it and that's really nice. So they see that I like their post, doesn't mean a thing. It doesn't do anything for any kind of generating of movement or business or anything like that. I just liked it. And eventually uh, I took a, a master Instagram class not too long ago and they talked to somebody from Instagram. Eventually I think that the people being able to see the likes will go away. I think that we'll be able to see who liked our feeds, but just be prepared for that. You're, other people won't see all this stuff like 10,000 people liked your, your feed or whatever. The most important things you can do on any post are to comment. So you can go to the little comment thing down there and then type in something like, you know, love this and, and type in a real thing, a real whole sentence that says, I love this idea of gift baskets or what a great way to give the gift of local for this particular um, picture, which is a, a gift basket that Freshlist is doing of all local products. Um, don't use one word things like yummy or get in my belly. That's one that a lot of bloggers use. It, doesn't, it just doesn't say anything. And it sounds like a bot after a while, if that is all that you're saying on everybody's post. Um, the most important thing you can do is to share this picture. So you hit the little airplane thing. There we go. And you can share it on your, my choices aren't popping up, but you can share it on your feed or you can share it on in your story or um, uh, either one of those two places. So um, if you wanna, excuse me, I'm, I'm telling you the wrong thing. If you hit the paper airplane, you can share it to your story. Why is that not popping up? Hmm, I don't know, but um, you can share it to your story or you can um, share it with other people. You can direct message them and say, you know, I could say, Susan, take a look at this. This is so cool. Nobody else will see that, but it's a direct message to Susan about a product that maybe both of us are interested in. So if you don't wanna make your, comp your correspondence public. So for people that have a venue, um, like Cynthia and Allison, if you see something that you know a bride is looking for, instead of copying the photo, sending an email, you could just do that and message them on Instagram and say, I saw these flowers and I thought this looked just like you. And you know, just thinking about you, maybe something you're interested in. And so that's a second way for you to connect with your followers because social media is all about connecting and, and building a relationship. Can, and can the I, direct, yeah, go ahead, Susan. I'm sorry, I was just gonna say like, if, if, if a <clears throat> venue posted a great picture about a new service they're offering or just something gorgeous, one of their suppliers that made a beautiful bouquet, could they send their own post to one of those brides? Absolutely. And that is an excellent, excellent idea. All the people, there are billions with a B, billions of people that, that are on Instagram now. 
So you will see that if you look at my feed, I have 3,800 people following me. I can guarantee you 38 people, 3,800 people don't see my posts every day. Probably 200, 250, maybe, maybe 10. I, you know, you just don't know. So that is all the algorithm and it's how uh, Instagram um, pushes that out. But if they're following you, they're aware of you and you have contact information with them. So if you want, you can DM any of those people that you want. Some of them may not be real people. Some of them are some, you know, Sergio in, in, who has one post of him and his child and you just know that's not a real thing. So, um, uh, but, but for the most part, those, that's how you connect with people. So when you, if you wanna direct message somebody with a post of your own. So I just posted this picture, I didn't make this, but it's a picture of a pie that um, the crust, I wrote a blog post about pies and this crust is, is like a cable knit sweater, like somebody knitting something. So if I have friends who knitted, who may not look at my post, um, I could do this and direct message them. I have no idea why that's not popping up. Direct message them and, um, and then you just hit send at the bottom. Like all the people will pop up there. And uh, that's the funniest thing. Nope. All right, so doesn't matter. Um, and you can direct message that post to them and say, you know, look at this, you know, maybe you could make this or something like that. So um, the next thing is the little eyeglass, the little finders thing. So you push that and that's how you find stuff. Now, what pops up here <clears throat> is either stuff that you, that you look at or stuff that Instagram thinks you will like based on what you look at. So if you have a ton of videos of people dancing that you don't know, it's because you stop and look at those along the way. And so Instagram thinks, oh, they like that. So I was getting that for a while because it is kind of intriguing and you think, what are these people doing? But then I made myself stop and look more at food so that my feed would change and I would get more food things. So sometimes I get a reel right here. Whatever the biggest thing is, is what Instagram wants you to see the most. So they highlight that and they're really big into reels right now. So, but otherwise I pretty much have um, uh, pictures of food. Every once in a while, there's some random reel or, or GIF thing there. So, uh, so that's that. And at the top of the bar, you can search for anything you want. So if I want to search for the heart of North Carolina, I just type that in and sorry, I'm going to type it in this way because I can't do it upside down. So, um, so I just typed in the heart and it comes right to the top of my feed and I can click on that. And now I can see the heart of North Carolina's feed and see what's going on there, whatever I want to look at there. You know, maybe this, this, I saw this cool post about a place I went to too, about country ham. It's Phillips Brothers country ham. It's an unbelievable place in Asheboro. And um, so maybe I want to know how to connect with him, but I couldn't remember the name of the country ham place. So this is, this is where that's good because it says right here, Phillips Brothers country ham. And um, uh, he's probably not tagged in the post because I just happen to know he doesn't have an Instagram feed, but but now I know where he is, so I know how to get a hold of him. So, um, so that's how you can use your search bar that way. The other way you can use your search, let me just get rid of that, is to find hashtags. So now I wanna to talk to you about hashtags. So important. I used to not think that they were, they were so important. And my friend, Susan Dozier, kept <laughs> telling me how important they were. And, and so I would just use my own. I would say, tell, hashtag, tell them Heidi sent you, hashtag, I'll have what Heidi's having. You know, I do two or three. So such a bad move on my part. I should have listened to Susan. So the best thing learned here is that always listen to what Susan Dozier told me to do. <laughs> but um, on Instagram, you can have up to 30 hashtags on a post. And that includes things like if you repost something, the little hashtag repost that the app automatically puts on there. So you can have up to 30 hashtags in a post. It does not matter where you put them. You can put them in the text of the post, like a conversation. So if I wrote, I'm going to visit hashtag heart of North Carolina, I could do that. Or you can, at the end of your post, you can do like dot, 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 dot and then put all your hashtags there, you can do that. Or you can put hashtags in the very first comment 
immediately after you make the post. It has to be connected like that. So it has to be immediate. Hashtags don't help you after the fact. So it doesn't help you to go in and take a post you posted three weeks ago and think, oh, I should have posted, I should have said heart of North Carolina on that one. That won't help. So it's Instagram is immediate. It's in the feed, it's in the moment, and it's what you're doing now. Um, so you get 20, you get 30 hashtags all together. Well, here's what I'm going to suggest you do. Think about it as 28 hashtags. That way you won't mess up because if you have too many hashtags, the post won't post. It'll either not post at all or it'll say too many hashtags and you'll have to go in and repost it. So I'm going to tell you a formula for figuring out how many hashtags and what hashtags you need. And then Susan, I'm going to let you pop in with some of the hashtags that you know are great for people that are in Randolph County and in the heart of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. so, so here's what I want you to do. And you can do this for yourself if you're watching as an artist or a shop owner or an individual who is in Randolph County, who has um, a business you're trying to sell. If you're a musician in Randolph County, you know, just and you're the thing you're trying to sell, that's great. If you're an artist and you have a studio, that's what you need to work with. If you're a venue, that's what you need to work with. Um, but I want you to write down on a piece of paper, just a scrap piece of paper, five niches where you, where your business fits in, five things. So um, for me, uh, hold on one second. Now I've lost my little notes about that. So five things, like for me, it was food and, and travel and local food or farms. So. I started with food, but then you want to niche it down because food is an enormous category when you have a billion people watching something. So I went from food to local food, which is a smaller category. And then I could even do North Carolina food, which is a smaller category. Or if I was writing a post about the heart of North Carolina, I could do food in the heart of North Carolina or heart of North Carolina food or Randolph County or food in Trinity or food in Archdale or Asheboro restaurants, you know, that narrows it down even more. But that makes your post more specific to people that are looking for that thing. And that's a good thing. So it's, you shouldn't try to, to use a hashtag where, where millions and millions and millions of people follow. You're gonna get lost in the mess. So niche it down. So five things, you're gonna niche it down. And then um, I'm, I'm going to jump in and yeah. say a, a lot of the niches automatically tourism would be a niche niche um, hashtag visit in C is always mm -hmm. an awesome one to use. That's the North Carolina tourism um, hashtag um, in C travel is a good one. And so um, and then the one thing, too, is like what it does is I follow some hashtags, too. Like, for instance, um, Our State Magazine or Our State, I follow those hashtags so I can see the things that, that come up there. And so in your industry, like weddings and sea weddings, things like that, there, there may be hashtags there that you'll want to follow so you can find other people to follow. Okay. Exactly, exactly. So um, I just typed in, since we have two venues here, I just typed in wedding. So what you do is you go to the search engine and then you hit tags. And that's how the hashtags come up. So I typed in the word wedding. Now there are 193 million people following that hashtag. The chances of you doing a Lindbrook post and using that hashtag and having somebody find Lindbrook and 193 million different things are slim, possible, but slim. So what if we said instead of that, like, um, um, uh, now I'm out of my head. So North Carolina weddings. Or NC wedding, maybe? Let's look at that one. Let's, we'll look wedding. at both of them. So you have to spend some time. So North Carolina weddings is 70,000 much better chance of people seeing you. So, and I would say North Carolina instead of NC, because while we all say NC, somebody in, in Colorado who wants a North Carolina wedding may spell out North Carolina. So it doesn't matter, you could say both. 216,000 use NC wedding. How many? 216,000. Oh, so more than North Carolina wedding, that's interesting. And then NC weddings with a plural is 122,000. So, so you, is 
thousand. So Which one is? NC Wedding was- Planner. Oh, okay, good, good, good. So, um, so you need to spend a bit of time researching it. Now, you don't want to do this in the moment while you're trying to do a post. So think about like I I just spend some time at the beginning of every week, uh, like on a Sunday afternoon or something, or sometime when you have a downtime thinking about what I want to post about coming up, like I know I'm traveling to Randolph County, or I know I'm going to talk about a Charlotte restaurant I'm going to go eat at, or I know that I'm going to the farmer's market. And I go through and I think about hashtags that would fit. Now, here's the formula. So let me put the phone down for a second, and then I'm going to show you how to do it. If you plan on 28 hashtags altogether, 15 of them need to be niche hashtags or hashtags that go to your niche. So if you're a potter, that's pottery or potter studio or what kind of, you know, um, something that's specific to you. One of those hashtags should be whatever city you're in, like Randolph County or Trinity or Archdale or um, Cynthia, where are you located? You told me earlier and I forgot. So Uh, Sophia. It's Sophia. Yeah. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. that should be a hashtag for you. And Mm -hmm. um And then, um, so 15 niche hashtags, then 10 additional hashtags that are post specific. So if it's wedding cake, if it's a coffee mug, if it's a kiln opening, if it's a a piece of, there's a lot of, you have a lot of antique places in the heart of North Carolina, which I love. They're my, I love to go look at them. So it might be um, antique silver, or um, new shipment or new antique shipment. You just need to find uh, hashtags that fit in that. And then three of them are industry hashtags. So that's like what Susan was talking about, you know, the visit North Carolina, or if you're a potter, it may be like crystalline glaze. Now I'm a consumer and I like crystalline glaze. And the only reason I happen to know that is because I was prepping for this, but it's, I'm not going to search crystalline glaze necessarily, but if I, but other people, other potters will see crystalline glaze and know what that is and be interested that you do that and may want to follow you. So um, here's what you want to do as you're going through your list and you're searching for hashtags, you want to look for hashtags that have between 20,000 and 500,000 followers. That is a really good category for you to be in and people will see your stuff. Millions, people probably aren't gonna see it. But if you find hashtags that are in, 28 hashtags that are in that 20,000 to 500,000 range, people will see your stuff. And if you divide it up like that, um, that's a really good way to cover all your bases. So much easier to do that ahead of time. And now here's what I do. And I just recently started doing this and it's a game changer, it really is. So I, uh, let me just, one of the, that Tidewater grain company that I showed you, I do their social media for them. So for Tidewater, I, in my notes section on my phone, I, for every blog post, every post I've done for them, I have 28 hashtags and they all have a different topic. So I just keep them in my notes and they're all right there. So say one is really seafood specific. So I can use that when I do a seafood post. One, maybe mushroom specific, like rice and mushrooms. So I use that when I do a mushroom post and they, they change from time to time. You don't wanna use the same hashtags in every single post you always post. That's gonna get you nowhere. After a while, it seems like a robot doing it and, and Instagram won't push it out anymore. So you wanna change up your hashtags. You don't have to change them all up, but the post specific ones are really important to change up. And sometimes the, the industry ones. Uh, and it may be that you just find something else like this. Ho- now there's a lot of holiday stuff. So, you know, happy holidays, maybe one um, spring weddings, maybe one winter weddings, you, you know, there's all of that. So, so just keep them in your notes. And then when you get ready to post, you just can cut and paste. So you can push your finger down just like that. And then get that little group that may be for seafood uh, and rice things. And then you hit copy. And then you go to, to the fir- you, you go to the first post and you the post that you that goes with and you post it in there. Now here's the way you post it in. So say that you have just done a post. I'm not going to do it. I'll just tell you. It's easier to tell you. 
you you've written a post you've got your picture up you've written all the stuff in your post you've tagged people in your post which is very important so maybe you tag other vendors that you work with for your weddings or you tag other partners that you do that you are associated with or you tag if you're a potter in seagrove you pot tag seagrove potters if you're a restaurant you all of you should always be tagging the heart of north carolina um so you you've done your little paragraph of posts you get you set it all up you go to to share and it's the thing pops up that says um location and you put in your location so you either put in trinity north carolina or archdale north carolina or you put in lynbrook hall uh or you put in you know thomas pottery studio or whatever it is and um and or phillips brothers ham so even if you're not on instagram your location is on instagram and, and that's really important to remember one thing that I found is that people often will search on the name of a city frequently. And so what I like to do with the location, and sometimes, you know, you've got to click and like, where is this place? I go ahead and put the name of the city and I find in my insights that I get a certain uh, extra boost in people coming to me through the location when I do that, um, rather than putting the name of my business, because especially if it's like at my own place, you know, right. Instagram says this is me and like we're blah 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 that automatically triggers them that it's um your business location so I've been put like one of the you know Ashboro NC or where, wherever the you know so that they can search on a city name excellent point if they're on that's an excellent point Allison you have something yeah I have a question so yeah. is is it bad like because we're close to high point and that might be the area that I'm trying to reach is it bad to to tag high point when i'm not necessarily right in high point but i'm close to it no use it as a hashtag or tag them in the context of a sentence okay so maybe you can say you know um here's a shout out to brides to be in high point you mm -hmm. know make it be in context if you're if you're tagging them but you can certainly use their hashtag in um it, Susan does that all the time on the heart of North Carolina's hashtags. If you'll look at them, right. they, they list every city that's in the heart of North Carolina, not every city they list, <laughs> they list like, you know, I guess they do list every city actually. Like, so there's yeah. Trinity and Franklinville and Archdale and Randleman and Ramsour. I'm going to leave out somebody Ashboro. So they it, use that hashtag. That's brilliant to do that because that's your market. And you, that's, that's what you want to see. So, um, that is not bad at all, but have it be in context with the post. Um, uh, so then after you share and it, that post is live, you go to your notes, you copy, you come back and you post it in the um, first comment, you post your hashtags. I like that better now. I used to not, I used to post my hashtags right after the post, but the fact of the matter is right now people, this is what people do. And I'm sure everybody on this call does this. So you get on, you wake up in the morning or whenever it is, you get on your Instagram feed, you just go, and this is, this is what you do. You just do this. And, and are you really stopping to read? Probably not. But if you see a cool picture, you might go back and say, oh, wait, now what is that? And then, then you're going to read. So if your comment, this is so funny, and Susan will laugh at this, you're coming from me because I am the queen of long comments. If your comment is, is, is long anyway, let's just put it that way. If your comment is long anyway, and then you have all these hashtags at the bottom, then it's real long. So if you can cut off part of that by putting your hashtags in the first comment, that is helpful. And the other thing is people see the hashtags better when they're in a comment, and there may be some hashtag they want to click on that is of interest to them. And um, so that's, that is helpful as well. Now, um, so, so that is how you find your hashtags. And remember that you don't wanna do the same hashtags for every post because then you, then you Instagram thinks you're a robot. I will also tell you that in this class that I took where they interviewed somebody who works at Instagram said that if you use a third party source to post, like if you're using, and I don't, there's a million of them. So I don't know if there, this was an exact one. But if you're using a third party source to post from, and it's not you on Instagram posting, and you're not using the, the new Facebook, Instagram, 
business poster thing, which I never use. I think it's I think it's hard. Um, your posts don't get the same the same mileage that they will if you post in person or if you post on uh, through the Instagram and and Facebook app for posting. They want you to use their stuff. And um, you know what? It's a free app and nothing is really free. So that's the payment, the pay that you get. So you, it's easier just to show up and do it yourself, I think, than to try to plan ahead and post ahead. Some people like to do that if you're going on vacation and post ahead. I always get nervous about, is that really gonna show up? Is it gonna be okay? Do I need to go back and look? And, and while I'm talking about that, um, and then I wanna talk quickly about video and stories, um, there is such a temptation because they make it so easy to post the same thing on Instagram and Facebook at the same time. I am gonna to suggest to you that you do not do that for several reasons. One is that if somebody's following you on Instagram, the likelihood is good they're following you on Facebook and whatever other social media you have. So that could be LinkedIn, that could be Pinterest, that can be your website. Those are all social media feeds of some sort. If they keep seeing the same thing on every feed, they, they're not gonna stop and read it. And you, uh, it is important that people stop on your feed. So we'll talk about that. Susan, don't let me forget to talk about that. Um, stopping. I'm just going to write a little, little note so I won't forget. One of the most um, important things, though, it's okay to repeat it because repetition gets it in their head. Like for an event. Right. It's okay to repeat it, but not to do the exact same post. So if you're doing, if I'm doing a post of that pie that I showed you on Instagram, I can use that exact same picture or a, another picture of a pie and the same words on my Facebook post, but it just, you don't want it to look exactly the same. You want it to have some different little twist okay. so that they will look at both things. So you're right, repetition is good. You wanna send them to the same thing. You maybe wanna talk about the same event, but you wanna mix it up somehow from one feed to another. Um, now, the other thing that's important on Instagram and probably on Facebook too, but I know for sure on Instagram, because what people do on Instagram is this scrolling thing um, all the time. The amount of time they stay on your feed is important to Instagram. So if I stop and, and okay, this is one from a little uh, baker in, uh, well, just somebody else just popped in. Um, if I stop on something to look like, uh, let me find a, sorry. If I stop on a feed to look, okay, so this is a, uh, this is from a bake shop in Winston-Salem. And um, if I stop to look at this and then I read it and the longer I stay on this post or that if I like it or then I comment or that I share it with somebody, the longer I'm involved with this post, the more Instagram sees <clears throat> that somebody's involved with this post and so they keep sending it out to other people who like the same things I like. So if I'm a bride and I spend a lot of time on, on Lindbrook Hall's feed and then, then they're gonna keep putting Lindbrook Hall stuff in my, under my home button where I'm gonna flip through and see stuff. So that's how you, people keep seeing you. So um, what you want is for people, you wanna make it easy for people to spend a long time on your feet. Now, this is just one picture. So one picture, you know, how long can you look at one picture? But I looked at this the other day on the Heart of North Carolina's feed. Let me go over there. There's a great post about places that you can shop in Archdale. And so there's, there's this cute place, which I have to get to, um, Amber and Susan. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, I must go there. Um, it's called, wait, let's just give them a little shout out because it's called the um, Southern Swag Farmhouse. And look, they have all this cute stuff for your home. But that's not all that's in Archdale. So as I'm reading, then I go to the next thing. And there's, um, oh, this is um, uh, Kersey Valley where you can, where you can, you know, throw axes and stuff. So then there's that. Or then there's a coffee at the, the chat and chew. So now I've been interacting with the Heart of North Carolina feed for a while now, cause I'm looking at each picture and then I'm going down here and reading like, gosh, where was that latte? That looks delicious. So then I can like it, then I can comment, then I can share. 
and I can share to people like if I want to send that to Susan and say we must go to these places I can send her a direct message that says this if I want to share and that just keeps people on the heart of North Carolina feed so the heart of North Carolina will keep showing up in my stuff and Instagram sees that people are interested in what's on the heart of North Carolina feed and they keep putting it out there for other people if I want to share this post on my feed you can do it two different ways you can take a screenshot, like if I just want this latte, I can take a screenshot of it. Do you all know how to do that? Does everybody know how to do that? On a phone, it's very simple. And I don't know if I can do it backwards, but you push the on an iPhone, you push the bottom button here and you push the on off button all at one time. And you try carefully not to turn your phone off. And then you come here, push the photo, edit it down. So I might just want to edit all the Instagram stuff out. And then I hit, so now I've got it framed the way I want it to be framed. Actually, that wasn't such a good job. Okay, there, there it is, framed the way I want it to be framed. And then I hit done and I hit save to photos. And that's how I save that photo. Now, you can use any photo in any video you see on Instagram, you can share it. The, because when when we and anybody can share and use anything that you put on your feed so if there's something you don't want shared don't put it on there because when you signed up for instagram you signed a waiver and in, in all that little fine print that nobody reads is a waiver that says people can use your stuff so the polite and proper and proper etiquette and polite professional thing to do is to credit somebody for their photograph but the truth is if somebody in wisconsin uses this picture of a latte and nobody ever sees it, you know, how do you know if they credited you? So they may not, but, but if all of us act in the best, with best practices, that's, that's really how you should do and help everybody. So um, thank you, Susan. So um, uh, that's what you need to do. Now you need to get a repost app. Do you guys all have a repost? Is there anybody who doesn't have a repost app who's watching this? On your Hi. Everybody? I do not. You do not? Who Who is? Was that Allison? Allison. Okay. So you need, uh, okay. Oh, well. Then I am going to change your life. <laughs> so you need a repost app. So go to your app store, whatever that is, and you're going to look. See this little blue? Uh, there it is, right there. Yep. With the two little arrows. It's called repost. Repost app. And I'll show you how it works really quick. Okay. So don't, don't do it now, but just make a note of that. Go to your app store, download repost. There's a bunch of them, but this one works particularly well and it's free. I've had it for a really long time. So just say, I wanna repost, um, let me find something else on the feed. Uh, I wanna repost this picture of the country ham. Remember that? So just say, I wanna repost, oh, there's four pictures there too. So let's say I wanna, eh, that won't work. Uh, you need a single post. You guys are really good about doing, okay. So this is people shopping in a gallery in Seagrove. Yep. Say, I wanna share that. So I go up here to the three little dots that are there and I type in copy. I don't type in, I just push copy link. And, it, and the little green bar comes up and says link copied. Then I don't click out of, I ask, of uh, Instagram, but I just go to my you know, homepage and I click on the repost app. And then it's gonna pop up, that post is gonna pop up right here. I also the other day found this cute picture of this uh, Komodo dragon from the North Carolina Zoo. And I thought it was adorable. And so I say, I copied it to repost and I don't exactly know when I will, but um, I think the desert exhibit is now open and that's where I met the porcupine. So I may do a little post about that. But, um, uh, so then you click on this, this, this is the, the um, people in the gallery that I wanna repost. You just click on that and then you click repost. And you, you can, it credits the person. So you can decide down here where you want that credit to be, whether you want it to be in that corner or in that corner or up at the top like that. And then you hit repost and then you put a uh, cap, copy caption, and now I'm gonna put it in my feed. 
And then it's just like I pulled up that picture from my um, photos. You go to next and you type in a thing. So if there's a picture of a band that you want at your venue and you can repost that and then that's an easy way to say they're playing now, then you type it in. Then if you wanna post whatever that person posts, you just push, push down and push paste and whatever they wrote is on there. Now you may not want all that. Sometimes it's hashtags, you may not want it on there. Sometimes it's, you can, you can adjust what you say, but in the end, that app, look at the very top. See it reposts, reposts to Heart of North Carolina with get reposts. So it gives itself an, an advertisement and it adds in a hashtag to your feed. You don't have to put all that on there. You can take off that hashtag in front of repost and just put the, put the word reposted or shared from or the little um, emoji of a camera, you know, like photo from the heart of North Carolina. And you can also take, get rid of the get repost credit if you want to, you don't have to do that. So, um, so that is how you share something. And if you guys, once you download that app, if you have trouble with that, just uh, email me or call me and I'm happy to help you. I'll walk you through it again. Cause sometimes it's a little bit hard, but it's an easy way to repost. You cannot repost uh, a post that has several photos. It'll just only repost the first one. So if you wanna repost all of those photos, take screenshots of them and then do it as a, as a carousel post. That's what those posts are called that have several photos as a carousel post from yourself. Um, last thing, I know we're short on time. One last thing I wanna say I is that- One quick thing on, on the repost app, it took me forever to learn that sequence and you can literally just Google or search anything that Heidi is talking about. Like, mm -hmm. how do I do the repost app? Where do I find the repost app? And then, um, you know, give me the steps for using repost or regram, there's different ones. And finally, after enough practice, you'll do it on your own. It took me forever. <laughs> yeah, it, it was hard at first, but um, but it it is a gay, it really helps. And it's a good way to promote somebody that you work with or somebody you want to work with. Mm -hmm. So if you're, um, uh, I don't know, if you have a shop and like for me, I'm a food writer. So if I really want to write about Phillips Brothers ham and I keep promoting them and I want them to partner with me on something, they're going to see that I'm already on their team and that is helpful. So, um, or, or any product, you know, um, uh, Four Saints Brewery, if I wanted to do that, you know, I could do that. So, and people appreciate the fact that you share and then they, it, it becomes reciprocal. So, um, Go, the last thing I wanna talk about is your bio. This is so important and I probably should have started with this. Let's go to your, your homepage and let's talk about your bio. So your bio, if you are a, um, this Heidi Bellotto food, this title here is searchable. So if I'm Heidi Bellotto already, see if there's another title that you can put here like Heidi Bellotto food, which is the name of my website. Um, so that may be Limbrook and Limbrook Hall or Limbrook, maybe you want this to say Limbrook Hall wedding venue or Limbrook Hall venue or some, some something else. You'll have to just think about how that works the best for you. And then you have a limited number to edit your profile. You go right here to edit profile and it pops up and you can tip right on that and you can type in whatever you want. I like to include my tell them Heidi sent you hashtag, but that is not critical or important. What is critical is your website. Think about this as a business card. It needs concise information that tells who you are and what you bring to the table and how you can help the person who is looking at your stuff and why they should follow you. And where you are. So, for a and where you are. Yes, yes, yes. I totally agree. And where you are. I'm changing mine. In fact, see, listen to Susan Dozier. So, <laughs> You noticed that I didn't have North Carolina on here and I'm going to put it on there. I got to reword some stuff. But um, so what you don't want it to say, so my husband and I love cats. If I write cat lover in my bio, that's really nice and it's fun, but it doesn't have anything to do with my business unless I groom cat. Well, who would groom cats? But unless you do, unless you groom cats or you t house it for cats or do something with cats, well, that's a very nice thing about your personal life, it is not important to your business and it just takes up characters in your bio. So anything that's personal, we love that you have cute children or cute dogs or whatever your philosophical beliefs are or whatever your um, 
the team you follow, all of that is really fun. But if you're a business, it doesn't probably relate to your business. So it doesn't need to be in your bio. That's what your stories are for. And you know what, Susan and Allison that, and Amber, that may be a whole other a whole other section, but stories are more for personal things to post. Like went for a walk today, saw these flowers. You know, you can just put a quick post up there and, and we may, because we're short on time now, so we may have to do a, another whole session on how to post to, to your stories. But stories, I'll just tell you this, uh, let me save my bio there. Um, stories, you know, when you go to your feed and you see, now I'm not, not gonna be able to bring them up. You see all the little, um, oh, for Pete's sake. Let me, let me just find somebody's. Here's the heart of North Carolina's. Okay, well, they don't have a story up right now, but um, so there's my story. So when you go to somebody's feed and there's a story right there, so I saw these sandwiches the other day at, at Pasta and Provisions. When you, every time you post um, your story, to your story, your little bubble goes back to the top of the feed. So if you can post on a story several times in a day, you keep getting back in front of people. Um, if you just post once in a while, when you post, it'll go in front of the people who follow you. But the better thing to do, if you can, if you have the bandwidth to post on your stories throughout the day or three times a day, morning, noon, and night, say, your bubble keeps going out in front of people and people keep seeing you. And your stories are how people get to know you. They get to know you, the personal side of you, the more personal side of you. Your feed is probably not, and your bio certainly is not the place to put that in there. Um, but you need your website in there. I think, I think in a nutshell, <laughs> That is Instagram in an hour. Um, anybody have any questions about anything? Jay Moon, tell me who you are with, because we didn't get to meet. If you can unmute yourself. Archdale Parks and Recreation. Oh, hey. hey. You do great. Job. Thank you. You do really fun stuff. So good. So see in Archdale Parks and Recreation, you're going to, you're, you can, you have the opportunity to share lots of fun videos about people and, and, and the outdoors and probably all the parks, uh, trails that you have, um, you know, what weather is, is, you know, it's raining outside, but we can do this or that, that kind of stuff. Um, and family fun is how, what is happening with you in COVID? Um, we are, we're considered essential. So, you know, uh, we have kids here for after school, so we're not allowed to have any, uh, daytime programs, but we are still offering Zumba and yoga at night. Um, oh, excellent. yeah. So you could take a screenshot of one of those, you know, of, of maybe an instructor, cause you probably don't want to, you may not be able to post pictures of the kids, but an instructor and post that, like, we, you know, we're still zooming and, and, you know, we're still here and available, that kind of stuff. So, um, oh, I'm glad you joined us. Thank you. So, um, Susan, any, any other questions from anybody about anything? Heidi, have or you Amber, heard anything you want to add? Assistant, um, I know like sometimes I'll look at other feeds that are um, popular in the area I want to do. Like I'll look at the Visit North Carolina, Visit NC. I look at the South Carolina feed. I sometimes look to see what they're doing. I mean, it's one of your major goals is to attract visitors and that kind of thing. I look at the people who think about that every minute of every day. And I sometimes look at what they're um, doing. One thing I will say is I have noticed that Christmas and holiday posts are getting less traction. I noticed that as a trend last year across several clients that I manage. And so, um, but, but you've, got, you've got to put them out there. I would just look and see if, if, um, if there's a way you can do it so that, you know, it's still within your color palette and it still looks like you talking, that you don't abandon kind of your whole brand presence. But don't flip out if your Christmas posts go a little bit less. And you can boost on Instagram. And um, the best way to do that is just to do it and start fooling around with it. Um, that way, you know, some people may see, especially paid posts, I think if many people see those, you're probably going to have to pay on those for um, for Christmas. I think the one thing is just don't be afraid. Heidi was such a good coach to me. She was on Instagram actually before I was. And you know, don't be afraid to just get out there and try stuff. You know, the worst thing you can do is to not do anything and um, get, totally get out there and try. 
I totally agree. And Susan, tell really quick about what you told me the other day about colors, about how, because I was saying, you know, it's, I have a picture, but it's definitely not winter and people are in shorts and there's blue skies and, and, um, and, I, I and anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because why? Tell why, what about the color thing? One of the things I've consistently seen, and there was actually a, a, a seminar on, at North Carolina Tourism two years ago about these colors that promote joy. And that color palette is kind of pink, um, uh, blue, green, yellows, sometimes browns and greens. And if you think about it, it's the colors of sunset and nature, the early morning sun, some of those kinds of things. And if you look at other feeds that have really strong popular followings that are carefully done and curated a lot of them rely on those colors if you go and look at the visit and see tourism feed you'll see their uh, their most popular things have those colors and so what you do is, is, is as you start to experiment you're like well well susan i i sell brown pottery what the heck am i supposed to do with that well, maybe take your pottery and sit it outside and shoot it with an incredible blue sky behind it or some greenery or, or even like, um, you know, at sunset on, on a fence post or something like that. You will be amazed at the different kind of traction that you get depending on what kind of context. And what I will say is it all depends on your audience. Um, the way Heidi uses some of those um, joyful, inspiring colors on her feed with food is going to be different than the way someone does if they're using the, um, on the feed with um, art or pottery or at a wedding venue. I would absolutely agree. Everything depends on your audience, whether you write long or short, whether you do one photo or, or three or four photos, you can do up to 10 photos in an Instagram carousel. That will keep somebody on your feed a long time if they're good photos. If they're not good photos, maybe not so much. They're going to maybe leave faster. So, so, um, and video, video is king on Instagram now. So don't be afraid. Maybe it's a tour of a venue. Maybe it's a tour of a, a part of a venue, like just wanted you to see our hall set up for this wedding. And it's a quick little zip around like that. Um, or it's uh, look at the new equipment in the park or look at, you know, such a beautiful day to be in the park. And instead of a still shot, maybe you're really out there with the kids on a swing or something. So um, I think that people stop and watch a video now. It doesn't have to be a reel. I swear to you, nobody here has to dance if you don't want to. But, um, but any kind of video and an IGTV video you could, I do that, look on my feed. I do those all the time. I do interviews. I did several interviews with people when I was uh, visiting uh, in Randolph. I did a really cool one with the um, Deborah from Roco Bakery uh, in Ramsour. And that's an IGTV video. So the first little bit of it shows on your feed and then people have to click on it and they watch the rest. Well, then they're on there for 16 minutes, you know, watching if it's interesting contact, content. And, um, and that's a good way to keep people on your feet. And it's a good way to share somebody's story. I, I love doing that. Um, and you could do it too with, with uh, you know, anything about some um, craft, you know, outdoor craft thing that you're doing in the parks or, or um, you know, you could even do stuff about people's lawns, like how to, you know, some lawn care, summer lawn care, or how to compost, share a composting um uh, post that was good for our environment. I mean, there's lots of, of um, applications there. A potter can absolutely do something on a potter's wheel. I'm going to post a really cute post. I didn't have time to do it this morning before we started, but I'll post it in, when we end. And you can look and see it's a little video of a potter that I don't know. And, um, and I'm going to tie it into Seagrove. And, and we'll see, you know, what happens. If you repost, one last thought, if you're trying to get more followers, if you repost viral posts or posts that have a lot of, have had a lot of likes on them, that that will build followers to your feed. It'll get followers to your feed. And if your feed is something they're interested in, then they'll follow you and they'll stay. So that's a really good way to try to build your numbers. That's that little pie that I did with the knitting. I don't have any idea who that person is. He's a photographer and, you know, I credited him. He does really artsy kind of photographs. But the pie tied in with my pie post, so uh, my pie blog post. So, so, and a lot of people have liked that, and it was already getting thousands of views. So, 
um, it's a good way to, to use somebody else's work. You can share it and credit them and use their work to promote what you do. That's perfectly legitimate on, on Instagram. So um, I think that's it. Again, if you have any questions or you need help with stories or you need help with the repost app and how that works, and it's easier for you to have somebody talk you through it, please feel free to contact me. Heidi, you can reach me through my website at Heidi Bellotto Food, or you can reach me um, via email and I have several, but the easiest one right now to tell you is um, Heidi Bellotto, H-E-I-D-I-B-I-L-L-O-T-T-O at Gmail. And I'm happy to help you. It's It's been so much fun, Amber and, and um, Susan, thank you so much for asking me to join you for this. I'm excited about tomorrow's session. Susan, you wanna give everybody a little preview? Right. Please do not um, forget to do this session. It's about Google for Business. And I will tell you, in my business, my Google for Business listing gets triple, quadruple the amount of views and traction that my website does and even that my Facebook does. Um, it's super important. It comes up in search. It is an important, important a way to promote your business. And if you haven't claimed your site or if you haven't updated um, your site with your COVID hours, Google marked a bunch of businesses closed. So make sure that was not you. I'll explain what that is and it'll be a short session, but you won't believe how helpful it is. Okay. Heidi, thank you. Thank you. Thanks to everybody that came. Um, we were especially happy to have little Liam joining us right now, Amber's son. <laughs> So thank you very much, and we will see you again soon. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Oh, Lindbrook has a, Allison has a quick question. Okay. Wait. Um, yes. yes, you can absolutely share the webinar. We would love that. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Oh, thank you, everybody. Take care. Um, be safe and be kind to each other out there. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Hey.